everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So today I have another, actually the final installment of Functional Friday. So in case this is your first Functional Friday, let me catch you up on what you've missed. Every Friday I've been releasing a video focused on one muscle or muscle group, talking about the function, uh, the anatomy, some functional exercises that you can do to strengthen and build this muscle. And then on Tuesdays, I've been releasing a workout specifically targeted to that muscle or muscle group. So today we are talking all about the chest or the pecs. Now there are actually two different parts of your pecs. You have the pec major and the pec minor. We are gonna be talking about both. And as always, we are gonna dive into the origin and insertion, the function of the muscle and the functional exercises that I recommend you do to strengthen and build it. So let's hop on in. Let me move these, these are moving boxes. Everything will look different Ugh. in a week. Teach this way in front of the doors. I don't love that this isn't like it doesn't blend in with everything else, so it's fine. All right, we're back. So let's start off with the pec major. Now the pec major actually does have three different parts of the muscle, so we're gonna quickly break that down here. For ease of understanding, again, keeping it simple, we're gonna kind of think of it like upper, middle, lower part of your chest. It's not exactly correct, but Again, we're trying to keep it simple. So when we start at the upper part of the chest, that is the clavicular section. Then we're going down into the sternocostal and then down into the abdominal part of the chest. Starting off with the clavicular. The clavicular section of your chest originates, uh, <laughs> it originates at your clavicle and then it's going to insert into your humerus or the bone of your upper arm. Your sternocostal section will originate at your sternum as well as ribs one through six. And then it's also going to insert into your humerus. And then your abdominal section of the chest or pecs is going to originate at the rect rectal <laughs> rectus. I really am a 12 year old guys. It's gonna originate at your rectus sheath, which is the part of your, it's like connective tissue that protects your abs. And then it is also going to insert into the humerus. Jumping down into the function of the pecs, we're gonna talk about the whole thing together. And then I'm gonna separate a few different parts of it that do specific other things. So. Anyway, your pecs essentially are in charge of adducting your arm away from your body, and it is also in charge of internal rotation from the shoulder. Now, breaking it down even more, the clavicular, clavicular section of your chest, or the upper part, is going to um, assist with bringing the arm up to 90 degrees, and then your sternocostal section, or like the middle section, is gonna be in charge of arm extension back to your side. So arm flexion, arm extension from the shoulder, and just like bringing it back. Did that make sense? And then another just like overall function of the chest is going to be, you know, inspiration. So inhaling, and it's going to be in charge of a lot of like pushing or throwing motions. All right, my husband's leading event. So if you hear a grown man screaming, it's my wonderful husband. So before guys, we dive into the functional exercises because I actually don't really have different ones for the pec major and minor. I wanna jump right on into the pec minor like anatomy. Killing it, Jenna. All right, guys, so the pec minor. As far as the origin and insertion point, the uh, pec minor is going to originate at ribs three through five, and it's going to insert into the scapula. Now, as far as the function, um, it is not the only muscle that does this, so I'm gonna say that it assists in drawing the scapula down and forward, and it's also going to be assisting in stabilizing the scapula. So let's jump on into the functional exercises. I don't know why I said that's so freaking weird. <laughs> so guys, um, again, when we think of functional, we typically think of doing things that mimic actions in everyday life. But like I talked about in last week's video on the abdominals, we also need to think about working at different angles, working different fibers, working different ranges of motion. So I'm gonna kind of incorporate that into the three exercises that I choose today. So the first exercise I'm gonna recommend is an inclined chest press. Now, if you don't have a bench, you can absolutely do this just by like propping yourself up against the side of your couch. It's definitely not as comfortable or as um, functional, but it gets the job done. So what we're doing in this inclined bench press, we're actually isolating more of the upper fibers of the chest. So if you are someone who's looking to really build like a really well-rounded, like literally well-rounded chest, this is definitely an exercise that you want to add in if you are not already doing it. Next exercise I'm going to recommend is a decline push-up. So 
If you've seen any of my videos before, if you've ever taken class with me, I love push-ups. I think it's actually one of the best exercises that you can learn how to do properly, including a decline push-up if you are specifically working on the chest is very important because it is going to target more of the lower fibers of the chest. So we just got the upper and now we're adding in with really targeting the lower fibers. And again, this is really important just to make sure that we're strengthening all different sections of the chest. Remember, we have a different um, origin point for each part of the pec. So we wanna make sure that we're training each individual section of the muscle. And then finally, the last exercise I recommend is a chest fly. You have a lot of variations with this. You can do little presses, you can do one arm at a time, but I really like this one because not only are we getting that frontal plane of motion working side to side in here, but we're also gonna start to recruit the use of the bicep as well. And any time that you can get more of a compound movement, I think it's better. I do think it's more of a functional way to train because we're typically not just using using the chest by itself in everyday life, we're gonna recruit other muscles like the traps or like the bicep or like the lats to perform whatever function that we're trying to do. So now that we've gotten all through that and no interruptions except for Jenna's excellent work in her team building event, I have just like a few random topics around the chest that I wanna talk about. So number one is about chest exercises and women. I find that most women neglect doing any kind of chest exercise um, because they, I don't really know what they think is gonna happen. Um, I feel like chest exercises, especially like a traditional chest press, is thought of as like a male exercise because they wanna get that like well-defined pec bodybuilder look. Women should be doing chest exercises as well because we have boobies and you do not want your boobies falling to the floor, all right? Literally, guys, your, your breasts lie on top. I just hit my microphone. Your breasts lie on top of your pec muscles. So if your pecs are not very strong, it's not gonna give you any kind of support for what's on top, all right? So if you want, if you want some perkiness up in there, I definitely recommend incorporating um, chest exercises and I definitely recommend making sure that you are varying those angles. How did I get through that whole thing without laughing, but I accidentally said rectal sheath and like lost my brain function? <sighs> anyway. So another thing that I wanna just touch on is that if you are working Let's just say like you do split days and you're doing like a push day, which would be the chest because this is an art of pushing or you're doing like chest and tries, again, pushing muscles. You wanna make sure that you are doing a shit ton of shoulder retraction before you do any of these pushing motions. The big reason for this, and I'm so sorry because you've heard it in every video, is because we're in flexion for most of our day. So most of our day, we're sitting down at a desk, the front of our body is coming forward, meaning we're using the chest a lot of the day, weakening the muscles at, at the back of our body. So we need to make sure that we're just bringing our body into a state of neutral before we start working the chest. I can't believe, I mean, how? I didn't pick my nose. I, it's the side. How, no cat, no Kevin. Okay, let's go on a field trip because, oh shit, hold on. Because it wouldn't be a functional Friday without Zoe. Are you ready? Hello. Hi, princess. Zoe, here. Yeah. All right, well, that was anticlimactic. All right, guys, that is the end of our Functional Friday series. So you do get one more workout. It's coming out on December 1st, which is also the day we're moving. So there's that. Let me know like if you really liked this series, maybe I can do it again in the future, but I'm just such an anatomy nerd. And honestly, I learned a lot from this series too. So hopefully you guys did. And that's it, I'm gonna stop blabbering. Goodbye.